we're continuing in our relationship series, and we're going to talk about conflict. Conflict. Anybody love conflict? Abby does. Okay, great. Abby loves conflict. No, most of us, we don't love conflict. We don't. For me, the thought of being in an intense conflict with someone, it makes me want to vomit. I mean, it just makes me feel sick to my stomach. I am not a people pleaser. I'm okay with making decisions that you don't like, but I don't like when you don't like me because of it. I want to be liked. I want people, maybe that is the same thing. In my mind, it's not, but I want people to be okay with me. And I struggle, I'm sure as you do, different times when you just feel like people hate your guts or they're mad at you or they're upset at you, whatever. It's, it's an awful, awful feeling. It's an awful feeling. And, uh, you know, if you really enjoy conflict, which I know Abby doesn't, but if you really enjoy conflict, I have the name of a great counselor. I can give you her number. She'll help you out. And I say that kind of lightly, jokingly, but here's the thing. I think we can love finding resolution to a problem. It does feel good when we can come to an understanding. We can work something out. But if we love conflict a little too much, we might be careful because we could be someone who is stirring up conflict and not resolving it. And so we want to be really, really careful, as the Bible tells us, in what we say and in what we do and how we handle ourselves within our relationships. And so today, this is a broad, what you can apply to friendships, to coworkers, to a romantic relationship, to your family. This is how the Bible tells us to deal with conflict. Proverbs 15 one through two tells us this. It says, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge apparent, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. Isn't that just a fun way to say that? Every time that you are being foolish, every time that you are causing conflict, just picture someone just belching, and that's what you look like when you're causing conflict. And none of us want to look like that. We don't want to be people who cause conflict. And so we're going to look at two things today. Number one, we're going to look at what each of us are storing in our own hearts. What each of us are storing in our own hearts. And number two, we're going to look at what is our conflict resolution plan what is our plan for when we encounter conflict? Because I think when we have a plan, something that we know, this is how I'm going to handle it, this is what I'm going to do, it's a lot easier to navigate those tense situations. So let's jump in by looking at the first part of it. You know, a lot of times we think that conflict is all about the other person who we're having conflict with, right? It's what they said, what they did, or how they made me feel. It's all on them. But the truth is, how we handle and deal with conflict really on the most basic level comes down to what are each of us individually storing in our hearts. Luke 6.45 tells us this, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. And so I have this treasure box with me this morning. I stole this from the elementary kids' room. Pastor Melissa was nice enough to let me borrow it. But I stole it because, you know, I think there's so many times that we, we don't deal with conflict, we don't deal with problems, and what do we do? We just, like, store it. We store it. We store all, every offense, everything someone said to us, every little amount of bitterness and anger or whatever the emotion might be, and we just, like, lock it away. And then what happens? One day, it all comes out at once. And your spouse or your friend will look at you and go, where did that come from? And maybe it came from a year's worth of things that you were storing up because you either didn't want to deal with it or you were like, oh, it's not really that big of a deal. But every time that we store those things away, it will become a big deal at some point. It absolutely will. You know, Josh and I, we have been Married almost 10 years, 10 years, which is crazy. Thank you. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. You know, and I, I would say for, for most of my life, I've had friends for the most part. I've had friendships 
Since I was 16, I've had coworkers, I've had people who I worked with in different environments. And here's what I unfortunately have found out. It's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Are you ready? What I have found out over all this time is that I am not responsible for what anyone says or does to me. I am not responsible. Now, I want to treat people kindly. I want to, you know, all those different things. But I am responsible for how I allow the things that are said and done to me to affect my heart. That's what I'm responsible for. I cannot control what other people do. I cannot control what other people think about me or what they say about me or how they treat me. But I am responsible for how I view every single person who I interact with. I am responsible for what I store in my heart towards someone else. And when I'm not careful and I don't resolve things, my treasure chest starts piling up with a lot of ugly stuff. And then, naturally, what comes out of my heart is whatever I've been storing. And, you know, I think a lot of times, because we don't like conflict, we think, well, I'm just going to, like, let it go. But then we don't let it go. We don't actually let it go. And I'm going to share a story with you this morning that is very embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. So in high school, I had two best friends, and we're still best friends to this day. And one of those friends is a very, like, go-with-the-flow type person. She just, whatever is like good. And so we got along really great because she would just kind of do whatever and I would do whatever and it was awesome. Well, my other best friend, we're very similar. We're very A-type. We're very um, opinionated. We're very kind of set in what we think is right. And our senior year, our teachers and coaches thought that it would be a great idea to partner us together. We were tennis partners and we were debate partners and it was terrible. It was terrible because over all these years of us being friends, and we can joke about this now, we laugh about it now, but after all those years of us being friends, we had allowed a lot of stuff to store up against each other. And we didn't bring it up. We just didn't talk about it. You know, like girls do, you kind of got the like evil eye at different points to each other and you just like, don't talk about it. It's like Fight Club. Don't talk about it, right? And so, All of this had been boiling up and boiling up, and we were working together in really close context. We were competing together. We were having to do, you know, our classes together. And finally, one day, I just had it. I had it with her. And we were working on our debate presentation. I was really cool in high school, if you haven't picked up on that. I was really into debate, which is cool. It is cool. But we were doing all this research, And everything was paper, like you would print out all the research that you had done. Now all the kids use laptops and it saves the environment, which is good. But we would have to print out all of the things we'd be preparing and we would have giant tubs, like plastic Rubbermaid tubs of evidence that we would haul around on a dolly. I'm not kidding. We would haul it on a dolly through high schools and we would, you know, use all this evidence on a weekend. And it was fun. It was awesome. Uh, And we're filing our stuff to prepare for one of the big tournaments and she looked at me and she said something very very offensive she said don't file that there it was offensive to me because I had let so much stuff pile up I had let so much stuff pile up and when we were tennis partners she was the way better player and so I was willing to listen to her but when it came to how to file our debate papers I felt like that was my thing that I should be able to have the say over And so I was filing, you know, like an expando folder, like an accordion kind of folder. I was filing one of those, and I picked it up, and I chucked it at her head. It didn't hit her because it didn't go very far. It was full of papers, but I threw it at her. I threw it at her, and I'm not a violent person, but I threw it at her, and I said, you can file it yourself. And I stormed out of the room so dramatic, so dramatic. I mean, how stupid. And then we didn't talk for two months. We didn't talk for two months. It was a rough senior year. We didn't talk for two months. Um, we had to continue to be tennis partners, and we like made it through that. We just like didn't speak to each other. It was very, very awkward. Um, our debate coach ended up splitting us apart and put me with my more like go with the flow friend, which was fine. And and you know, but but we had this just intense boil over conflict. And finally, we sat down. And what did, we do? what did we have to do? We had to each pull out all the stuff we had been storing for four years. And it was ugly. It was hard. We both had things that we had done that had hurt each other deeply. 
And then other things that were just like, wow, that's so stupid. I can't believe, you know, we held on to that. But this is what we do all the time in our friendships, in our relationships, in our, you know, with our coworkers. We let those little things that they do just pile and pile and pile. And it's not how God wants us to live. It's not how God wants us to handle conflict where we blow up and throw something at our friend's head across the debate room. That's not, not what God wants for you. It's not what he wants for you. And so what we have to do is we have to check our hearts regularly to see what we're storing. And I think we can all feel and notice if we take just an extra second, we notice whether we're storing things away, right? We just do. You notice, and it escalates every time someone does something to make you upset. And when you feel that, it's a moment to go, oh my goodness, I need to check this out. I need to check this out. And when you realize you have something, you have two options. You have two options. This is what I always tell our students when they come to me and they're like, I'm mad at this person or I'm whatever. And I say, well, you can either go talk to them or you can let it go. Those are your two options. You can go talk to them try to work it out, come with a good heart, come trying to resolve it, or you can forgive them and move on, but you can't store it. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you, and when you are mad at someone, just hold on to it forever. The Bible never says that. The Bible tells us the opposite over and over again. It tells us to forgive each other as Christ has forgiven us. It tells us to extend grace and mercy, and it does tell us to be honest with people to go to them to try to resolve these problems. You know, we will not find verses that excuse us storing up our stuff. Instead, we find verses like this from 1 Corinthians 13 that tell us that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It does not throw files at their friends. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. Wow, No record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. You know, we read this passage a lot at weddings. It's like, it's the love chapter. It's like nice when we're like getting married. But this passage was meant to be applied to every single person who you interact with. Just like Pastor Josh talked about last week, love has to be at the center of every interaction that we have with another person, whether they love us back or not. Love does not store up faults, it lets them go. Love forgives and moves on whether the other person ever forgives you in return. And that's the harder part, right? That's hard. When maybe somebody else, they're gonna choose to store it against you. But don't let that deter you from doing what God wants you to do and forgiving and releasing it and moving on. Love is all on you. It's all on you. It's the one thing that is actually within your control, that you have the ability to love somebody else well. And whatever we store in our hearts is what will come out. And when we're not careful, a lack of love will produce more conflict and chaos than we could ever imagine. Everything we do hinges on our ability to love other people really well. But we all know, right, that we're human. And even when we try really hard to love people well, there are going to be times where we get it wrong, where the other person gets it wrong, we have a misunderstanding, or it was totally intentional, and we have conflict now, and we have to deal with it. So what do we do? You know, most of the time, I like to try to reframe conflict. I don't want to come in, like, feeling anxious about it or feeling like I need to put on boxing gloves. I want to come in with the expectation, like, let's just have a conversation, This does not have to be a battle. Let's come in and just talk. And that immediately, what sounds better to you, conflict or a conversation? A conversation, that word has a lot more peaceful connotations. It makes, it just puts us all at ease. When we can look at it that way to understand that we're going to have to have a lot of conversations with a lot of people throughout our life. Some of them will be really easy. Some of them will be hard. Some of them will make you leave feeling like the best person in the world and other times you walk away and you're like wow that was just awful but we have to be able to have these conversations you know the bible tells us over and over again that we have to settle conflict we have to yesterday in the bible reading plan paul specifically addresses two women in the philippian church and he says look you two need to work your stuff out 
He calls them out and he writes to them specifically and he said, you need to settle this dispute. And here's why. It's because disputes distract us from what God is trying to do in and through us. Whenever you have a dispute with someone, you have a conflict with them, it is distracting you from what God wants to do in your own heart. And it's definitely distracting you both from the work that he has for you. And so we need to resolve these issues as quickly as we can, because if we don't, the likelihood is, is that we're just going to keep stockpiling them up. And that's not good for anyone. So Matthew 18 gives us this model for how to deal with conflict in verses 15 through 17. This is what Jesus tells us to do. He says, if another believer sins against you, go privately to them and point out the offense. Go privately to them. Have that conversation. Admit, man, you know, when you did that the other day, that hurt me. Can we, can we talk about it? I don't want to hold that against you. And a lot of times, I think that works. When you don't put it on your social media, you're not talking to other people about it, you just go straight to the person to try to work it out. But if that's unsuccessful, here's what Jesus says to do next. He says, take one or two others with you and go back to them so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Sometimes we need a mediator. Sometimes maybe we need to bring in a counselor to help us be able to fight fair, to help us to be able to navigate these times. And that does not make you weak. That does not make you a failure because you guys couldn't work it out. This is what Jesus tells us we need to do. Then if that still doesn't work, It says, take your case to the church, and if he or she will not accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Yikes, and that feels really harsh, right? None of us want to feel like we get to that point where we truly can't resolve it. Because I think in every situation, when people come in with an open heart, with a heart that's seeking to love, we should be able to. We should be able to work these things out. But sometimes... Maybe it just doesn't. And now that person, they have to own the consequences of being unwilling to be loving, of being unwilling to work it out. And at that point, that is on them, and it's not on you. When you have done everything that you can do, and listen, be patient, use the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to help you to know what to do, continually pour out more love and mercy and grace than you feel like you should. And when you have done those things, when you have maybe involved another mature person to try to help you and it really can't come to an agreement, you can be released to walk away from it. You can. And most of the time, we hope that's never the outcome. But I think we all know that in our lives, there are people who just want to keep dragging you down a toxic path with them. They want to stay stuck in bitterness. They want to stay stuck in unforgiveness. They want to just continue to dwell in all of the anger and the junk they've been storing. And you don't have to go with them anymore. You don't. You can be released to go and do what God has called you to do. And you don't have to allow them to have that power and that control over you anymore. You don't. God has better things for all of us to do than to disagree and to argue with each other constantly. That was never his plan for us as people, and it's definitely not his plan for us as the church. So we have to navigate these moments with grace and honesty. We have to deal with them quickly. And then we have to know that it's just as biblical sometimes for us to walk away in peace and to shake the dust from our feet. Jesus and the disciples did that multiple times where a church or you know, people would not listen to them. And they said, okay, we will walk away from it. And that can be just as powerful and just as important. And when you do find yourself in that spot, know that you're still required to forgive them. You're still required to forgive and to move on and to not hold anything against them, no matter what they are holding against you. And it's tough. That's tough. It sounds so easy and so simple, but I think we all know how difficult conflict moments can be. And in order for us to be who God wants us to be, in order for us to have healthy relationships, we have to have a plan for how we're going to handle conflict when it arises. And we have to handle it as people who are mature, as people who want to use wisdom, and as people who are being led by the Holy Spirit with every word that we say. But it all comes back to what are we storing in our heart? 
because whatever you store in your heart will be what comes out. And that's why we believe it's so important. We want to read the word together. We want to be in life groups together. We want to constantly be saturating ourselves with the word because when we do that, we have a lot better chance of having good things come out, even in tough and hurtful moments. So today, here are the two questions. As the band comes back up, we get ready to close this down. Number one, what are you storing in your heart? What are you storing in your heart? I'm sure for each of us, this topic brought someone to your mind. It brought someone to your mind. It brought maybe a past situation to your mind, maybe a situation you haven't dealt with, you've been holding on to it. And this morning, I want to encourage you to either go talk to whoever that is or to let it go, to let it go and to forgive. It is really that simple, but it will take a process to walk through and it will definitely take God's help to help give us the strength to navigate those moments. And we wanna be able to do this well because the reward of having healthy relationships is so worth it. The reward of having healthy friendships, healthy interactions with your coworkers, healthy marriages is so, so worth it. My friend and I, you know, we battled it out, but we have a very healthy relationship now because we were willing to. Over the years, Josh and I, we've had to battle it out. We've had to sit down and have some lovely conversations that maybe didn't feel so lovely in the moment, but it's worth it that we can have a good relationship, that we can like each other, right? Like, that's important. We wanna be able to like the people who we have to spend our lives with. Be bold, be bold take charge and ask for God's help and he will give it to you. He will. So Lord, today, God, we pray that you would help each of us. God, we don't want to live in conflict. We don't want to live distracted. We don't want to live with treasure chests that are just overflowing with junk and garbage and things that don't reflect who you are. God, we want to be people who stand strong in your word, who stay true to our convictions, who have healthy boundaries. God, we want to be able to go to each other in love and with your grace and mercy that you've extended to us first. We don't want to be held back or held down by the things that we really need to either deal with or to let go. God, I pray for those of us in the room who we have a conversation we've got to have with someone. We just know we do. Would you give us the courage to do it? Would you pour your love out on us so that we can pour it back onto somebody else? Lord, for those of us who maybe having a conversation is not what needs to happen. Maybe we have had multiple conversations and this morning, maybe we feel your prompting to just release it, to just forgive. And understand this, forgiving isn't excusing what anybody has done to you, it's not. It's choosing to not let that have power over you anymore. It's choosing to live in the freedom and the grace of God to move on. God, if that's us in the room, would you give us the courage and the strength to just even in this moment within our own hearts to say, God, I release it to you. I don't wanna store it any longer. I don't want it to take up space in my life any longer. I want a heart that reflects you. Not bitterness, not unforgiveness, not anger. I wanna reflect you in the way that I treat every person in my life. God, would you help each of us to regularly examine our hearts, to constantly come before you and to say, God, would you show me the things that I need to let go of? Would you show me the things that I need to deal with? Because God, we know that you do. You are so honest with us and we thank you that we never have to wonder. God, you reveal to us the things that we need to deal with. Help us even today to go and deal with them to have a healthy conversation in love and to do everything we can to be people who live in peace, not in chaos. God, that's how you want us to live. Would you help us? Help us, God. 
we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.